look up, you say when you're 24, you have, you got so much life ahead of you, and then when you're 34, you're like, dang, it's like, uh, where did the last 10 years go? so many guys that I've played against like as far as like who I, who I know like that brought the best out of me like one guy he's not playing anymore is Paige Asupa. I hated playing against him and I think he hated playing against me but it brought the best out of me. I mean I've lived in, in Karlsruhe, I've lived in Leverkusen, Frankfurt, Berlin, Bremerhaven. I think Braunschweig is a very nice small city because I never knew what type of city Braunschweig was before I actually played here. I think the organization is a, they're very nice people. You know, they do everything they can. That's at least what I get out of it. And this is, this is really honest. I don't have a problem with anything here. To be honest with you, everything's been good. But at the same time, I'm a very laid back person. I don't try to get the best of everything. I just try to get what I'm supposed to get and, and everything's cool, you know, as long as my family's good. It's around between 7.30, 8 o'clock. I mean, she wakes up and sometimes we just lay in, lay in bed together for an extra 30 minutes or so. And then we all finally get up around this time, like 8 o'clock. Uh. Oh, gesundheit. Bless you. You know, she changes so much how we go about our day and how we do things. So it's not how it used to be when we can just go and do things we want to do. It's, 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 it's totally changed, but it's all changed for the good. So. <laughs> End of last season in Bremerhaven where the season was over and Ellie was still pregnant and then two and a half weeks after the season she was here. I miss her as a, a itty bitty baby already. But at the same time, the cool part is coming now when she's getting older. She's talking a little bit, saying da da, playing with other kids and things like that in groups and seeing her at swimming class and stuff like that is definitely, is definitely fulfilling, you know, as a father and as a parent. I want to have the opportunity not only for myself to have some some a good job after basketball, but I think it's important for my wife too to have. You know, I don't want her to be in this situation where she is a stay home stay at home mom because she's not she's not a, she's a very active and very ambitious person. Baby sets his alarm on our honeymoon or on our vacation and goes to the gym. Uh, I never get upset. Um, I always. When we go home to my parents, I make sure there's a gym he can go to, a basketball gym. You know, I have a job to do where, you know, a club gave me the opportunity to play here. And walking up and down the stairs every day. Professional athletes can be kind of nervous about like how, you know, when you're being videotaped, how you're being portrayed, you know, you feel like you can't be yourself. And um, things can be misconstrued or misconcepted. You know, we had Trent out, then we had Lucas out. It was just a great day for me. I had a cousin who was in the military here uh, for a couple years and he always talked about when I was in college like driving on the Autobahn and things like that and at that time I, I never knew I was going to play in Germany you know I was a college kid. In Germany it's like you have a rule you can't pass anyone by the right but in the states if if you're on the right side and everyone in the other three lanes are going slow they're going to pass you. <laughs> Good guy, I mean, family, family guy. So, you know, I played with him in Berlin, and real, you know, real good guy. During the season, lifting it keeps the injury. It's basically like injury prevention. Uh, keeps you definitely in good shape, but also at the same time it keeps you strong during a long season, you know. 
gives you a different balance. Um, it also has a lot to do with off season too, how you train, how you eat, how much rest you get. You know, when you get older, you have to go the extra mile to, you know, stay in shape, you know, lift weights, eat right, get a lot of rest, stretch well, and things like that. So it's definitely, definitely important. I did three years in Mississippi. My first year, I actually it was like a medical red shirt where I red shirted. I set out um, because I had some like small, like a small knee injury, nothing big. But the coach just said, "Okay, we want to save you for two more years so you can play a lot and be a starter." So I used the first year to get stronger. Um, I got my degree in education, not knowing how basketball would go. Um, I always knew I had my degree and I had something to fall back on where I could be a teacher or a coach. I probably would be doing something with basketball as far as like, you know, coaching, um, doing AAU teams or, you know, rec center teams or something like that just to, to work my way up. You have some teams where you practice once a day or you start off tough and practice twice a day. Then later in the season you go once a day, you know, to save your legs for the games in the latter part of the season. But it's definitely tough to come in and practice twice a day, every day for uh, four or ten months. I would be, I would be lying if I said it, it was, it was a necessarily a good thing. But at the same time, that's the way the setup is, and that's the way you have to go about your job, and you have to come to, you know, do your job every day. I guess it's. Bad mechanics that stay with me for a long time. Uh, bad mechanics that get you busted. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and, that, and that ratio too. So. I didn't realize it though, until you came here yeah. a little bit. Because yeah. he always just made the shot yeah. when we played against him. <laughs> for me, it's, it just is what it is. Guess what he forgot? His yeah. wallet. Who? Mo? Mo. Who, who paid for him? Max. Max. Set you up, man. For he real, forgot man. his wallet. Nah, I don't forgot my wallet, boy. Like we on camera, you know that, huh? You a grown up. Okay. Sometimes guys are constantly telling younger players what to do, and I don't want to do that. I just want to, you know, guys feel like I can help them in some way, or give them some feedback on something. I'm always willing to help. Those guys got to learn too, you know. Everybody has to learn, you know, on their own. Paths. Guys I learned from in the German League, I remember Jens Uwe Gordon. He was with me in Karlsruhe. And at the time, I think he was about 35, 36 at the end of his career. And uh, man, he was so athletic for his age, you know, still working hard, still coming in every day. And, you know, he was a good guy. He always, you know, talked about me about his experiences. I mean, good or bad, in the end it helped him. And, you know, but he was a, he was one of the guys that I learned a lot from. For me, living in Germany has been, it's become like a second home to me. In some ways, my wife says I became a little German myself. <laughs> Discipline. <laughs> Discipline. Strict. And he follows the rules. He's very on time. Something I don't have. If it's 3 o'clock, it's 3 o'clock. There's no 3.05. I think where we live in in the States, in Atlanta, is a perfect place. It's a very small part of it, northern Atlanta. They talk with a specific slang. It's hard to understand, you know. I mean, even, even for my wife, she speaks English very good and she understands, but certain times when people have a strong southern slang, it's like she can't understand. She like look at me like, what is what did she say? <laughs> In Carl's room, it was me and Dominic Jones. I don't know if you remember, he used to play in Braunschweig. Right? And uh, Ruben Rustler, he was like our helper at the beginning. You know, Ruben was helping us out, showing us places to go. So there was this uh, small restaurant around the corner from our apartment. It was an older lady who worked there and she spoke, of course, no, no English, only German. Ruben would be there to translate and help us or teach us a few words. So one day me and Dominic went and we tried to order some chicken and Try to order some fries and some pommes. She didn't understand us. And she just went ballistic on us. Just like screaming at us in German. She gave us like, I don't know what she gave us, but it wasn't, it wasn't chicken and fries. She like,
slammed the food on the floor and told us to get out. And yeah. Okay. Well, I'm from a small town named Gashon, Alabama. It's about 80 to 90,000 people. Um, it's not a city where everyone knows everybody, but it's close. My cousin, he had a, for Christmas one time, he got a, a basketball goal. You know, it's kind of typical in the States, you know, you drive through neighborhoods, you see basketball goals in the driveway. So when he got a basketball goal in the driveway, you may have been like 10 or 11. And we would just play basketball outside for hours, you know. You know, it could be raining, it could be cold outside summertime. We were just out there playing hooping. Uh, after school until nine o'clock at night. So that was the real, the first time I really started to play. I think Playing here for so in Germany, being a part of the league for so long has built a lot of great relationships. You know, not only with teammates but other people. Germany is one of the top four best leagues in Europe. I'm just glad I could be a part of it and see the transformation and the growth of the league. Taylor, you want to come to Daddy? <laughs> no. 